Hey Sticks, what is a good free-to-play MMORPG? You know, it's questions like this that make these top 10 videos an integral part of this channel. Every month I do a video titled free-to-play MMORPGs that you should try in X month. In these videos I go on to list 10 different MMOs that you may or may not have played that I haven't featured over the course of the year up until that point in anticipation for satiating that thirst that you guys no doubt have in an attempt to kill that boredom. These videos essentially highlight games that you guys may have overlooked, sometimes even obscure games that many of you may not have even heard about. This is especially important right now as there are so many people stuck at home looking for something to do, looking for something to play. Now as I've stated in the past, each video will have two bigger MMOs and eight smaller MMOs. So note that while your favorite free MMO might not be included in this month's list, that doesn't mean it wasn't included in last month's list or that it isn't going to be included in next month's. So let's go ahead here and take a few minutes to not only spread some love, but also some activity around the genre, yeah? Terra was released back in 2012 as a pay-to-play MMORPG requiring you pay a monthly subscription fee. Shortly after, in 2013, the game rebranded from Terra to Terra Rising with a transition of business model over to free-to-play. This is due to a steep decline in player population over the course of its first year within North America and Europe. However, the game found critical and commercial success as a free-to-play game, having almost 30 million registered players back in 2017 and over 2 million players after its console launch in 2018. The game the game at the time was one of the most visually stunning MMOs on the market and to date has remained an incredibly attractive game. Despite releasing back in South Korea in 2011, Terra has retained the title of one of the best action MMOs ever since its release. And honestly, its combat alone is one of the reasons I often find myself making my way back to the game. And while a lot has definitely changed over the years, Terra remains one of the highest quality free to play MMOs that I have ever played. Allods Online was released back in 2011 and was referred to at the time as the WoW Killer, one of the first of many MMOs that would attempt the WoW formula and ultimately fail to adequately adapt what made WoW, well, Wow. But just because Allods Online failed to replicate the success it was after, that doesn't mean that the game itself was a failure. Quite the opposite, actually. Allods at its peak had millions of players. I remember logging into the MMO that I was playing at the time, which if I'm not mistaken was Perfect World International, and hearing about how there was this new exciting MMO shaking up the market. Everyone I knew flocked to the game and sung nothing but high praise for it. However, that was short lived due to the pay to win mechanics introduced. After realizing their mistake, Allods and the devs behind the game decided to introduce a brand new server for players to play on that was free of pay to win, but required a subscription fee much like they were after initially. While Allods may have started it out as a WoW clone, it definitely became much more than that. It's a quirky, voice acted, tab target MMO that has retained a very loyal player base for a decade. Champions Online was released back in 2009. Wow, has it really been that long since this game came out? Holy crap, I feel old now, jeez. Can you believe that this game actually came out before DC Universe Online? Unlike DC Universe Online, however, which began as a subscription-based MMO, Champions Online has remained completely free for its entire life. These two MMOs are pretty much the only superhero-themed MMOs available on the market right now, although there are a few indie games currently in development that aim to take down the competition. Honestly though, Champions Online is a pretty solid game in terms of what it has to offer. It utilizes tab target combat and allows for you to interact with various parts of the environment, something that is rarely done in MMOs. Its selection of customization options and superpowers is also very impressive, allowing for you to make the hero of your dreams. The only issue that I see people having with the game is with its graphics, which are honestly pretty dated at this point. I actually just finished a video on Critica's new class a couple days ago. If you're interested in Critica, then I urge you to go on ahead and check that out. Critica Online released originally back in 2017, and then went on to re-release under the new Critica reboot title at the end of 2019 after the developer Allem decided to self-publish the game outside of South Korea. Critica is a hub-based MMO where the game takes place in various different town hubs, having players take missions and socialize with other players, but otherwise, you run dungeons to progress through the story. I know this doesn't necessarily appeal to all types of MMO players because, and let's be honest here, there are a lot of us that enjoy open world, freely explorable games. But nevertheless, with thousands of active players, these games have their place. Especially when your combat is as good as the action combat found within Critica. 
So, Secret World Legends was released back in 2012 under the title The Secret World. The game initially utilized a buy-to-play business model with an optional subscription for players, but after declining to a point where the game was no longer profitable, the devs opted to transition to a free-to-play model. Interestingly though, Secret World Legends is one of the very few MMOs that take place in the real modern world. Well, I mean, Currently, it is probably the only one that occupies this setting that is still alive and active. Regardless of whether or not you're a fan of the setting, nobody can deny that this game has some pretty damn good action combat considering when it was released, and even better voice acting. I mean, this game has some of the best voice acting I have ever seen in an MMO, I guess discluding WoW or Final Fantasy XIV. It is a highly unique game with a very large emphasis on story, having fully voice acted cutscenes that really add a lot of personality to the game. A lot was changed when they rebranded under the Secret World Legends title, and I know plenty of people were unhappy with those changes, but for a completely new player to the game, this was definitely a treat to play through. While Fantasy Star Online 2 is currently only available on the Xbox console, it has been confirmed that we're going to be getting a PC release this month, which is why it's in this list. PSO2 was originally released back in Japan in 2012, with us finally gaining access to the game on Xbox earlier this year. Yet even after remaining a Japanese exclusive MMO, it has remained one of the most highly anticipated MMOs year after year. The game is a beautiful anime MMO that takes place in a large social quest hub where you take missions with other players and tackle fights ranging from small-scale encounters you can complete on your own to large-scale encounters you need several groups for. Despite when it was released, the action combat the game employs is better than most games released even in this day and age. You have the option of equipping various different weapon types and swapping between them on the fly. This allows for you to fill different roles at any given time and provides players a lot of individual utility. Now, while this game is mostly instant content, there's so much to do and so much more to explore that you just don't really feel it, especially considering you can meet other players around instances randomly at times. I mean, as an example, the very first time I'd encountered another player was when I was in this dungeon and I'm just sitting there, you know, mashing through all my buttons, trying to eliminate all of the monsters that are within the instance that I'm in. When out of nowhere, I see this guy, which at first impression I thought was an NPC, and this guy just walks right up to me. He, he stands here for a moment. I'm like, why is there an NPC like right here in the game? And then he turns to me and he goes, Hey, nah, I, like suffice it to say at the time, I was a little freaked out. So Perfect World released originally back in China all the way in 2005, but then in North America in 2008. I believe I played the game back in 2009 and continued playing it for approximately two to three years. It was my life. While the game is currently a shell of its former self, having become a very hardcore pay-to-win game, if you play the game exclusively for the PvE aspect and avoid PvP for the most part, you'll still be able to see why I devoted years of my life to it. Yeah, it's a little old by this point, the tab target combat is a little bit slow, but with how many abilities you have and how many unique interesting classes are available to play as in-game right now, especially the non-melee classes, you likely won't really feel much of it. Now, the character creator is also still, in 2020, one of the most intuitive creators in the MMO verse. Like, no joke, go ahead and take a look at pretty much any video on this. I mean, I did one myself where I detailed the, uh, the size of the assets you could have, and you will see just exactly how absurd these characters can get. Now, while Perfect World is an incredibly grindy game since nobody really does quests to level up, you'll probably find a difficulty that is not common in MMOs anymore, and that's refreshing. Even with some players literally spending billions of dollars to become PvP gods in that game. Although considering a lot of people don't really participate in the open world PvP anymore and participate in any kind of PvP outside of the instance PvP, that kind of seems like a waste to me, but I mean, you know what? I'm not gonna judge what you spend your money on. Continent of the Night Seal was released back in 2012 to quite a bit of success. It was one of the few hub-based MMOs available at the time, and it had a very large focus on PvP, something that people were obsessed with having in their MMOs back in the day. C9 is one of the few free MMOs that players can arguably agree on as having some of the best action combat in the genre. Some of the developers that worked on designing the combat in C9 actually ended up working on Black Desert. Much like both PSO2 and Critica Reboot, C9 is a hub-based MMO that has players tackle instant 
against dungeons, with dungeons being rerunnable on varying difficulties, providing additional challenge for those of you that are interested. However, if I'm to believe the general consensus on literally every one of my C9 videos, PvE is only an afterthought, with PvP being a main focus, or rather, THE main focus of the game. And while I can't comment on that personally, if a fun hub-based action MMO with a lot of PvP sounds like something that you would enjoy, then look no further. Blade & Soul released back in 2016 after spending years teasing us with the South Korean version of the game. It launched to ridiculous popularity, having millions of players playing within the first week alone. I hadn't seen as large of an MMO launch as that in quite a while. The game retained a lot of its player base over the course of its first year as it had incredibly detailed character customization, one of the best action systems in an MMO, free to play or buy to play, and absolutely gorgeous graphics. However, its poor performance, its heavy pay to win PvP system, and lack of much to do at endgame other than grind quickly buried the game. Over time, there has been a lot of additional content released, but the fact that the game is a large grind has always been an issue for players. The game has been such a huge success that there are now what, like four or five different mobile spinoffs currently in the works? And if you're a fan of the Blade & Soul PC MMO, then you'll probably be excited for these projects as well, or at least one of them. Eden Eternal is one of the first anime MMOs that I ever played. Tales of Pirates, Fly, Fiesta, and Eden Eternal. Eden Eternal itself was released back in 2011 under the now defunct Area Games. I played this game on and off over the years because it offered me something that no other MMO did, and that was customization and freedom over my class. Not only did it have a lot of customization over your skills and abilities, but at the same time it provided you the option of unlocking additional classes to play as through leveling and meeting certain conditions. This allowed for players like me to level several different classes all in the same character something that Ultaholics will understand was groundbreaking for me. It also provided one of the most adorable worlds and had some of the best tab target combat I had ever seen in an anime MMO. Even in 2020, I feel as though Eden Eternal has some pretty amazing skill animations and provides more than almost any other anime MMO currently. And there you have it. 10 free-to-play MMORPGs that you guys can totally check out with all of this new spare time you no doubt now have. But that's just my opinion, my impressions of the genre right now. What do you guys think though? Let me know down in the comments below and let's talk about it. Anyway guys, that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Someday soon I'm gonna make it.